With Newton's first law, we've said that an object at rest stays at rest, or an object in motion continues in motion where that is a constant speed and a straight line. Now, we call both of these conditions equilibrium. And equilibrium will be a, ter a term that we refer to later in chapter six, so it's important to understand what equilibrium refers to because it refers to these two different conditions. Now, we have an object that is, a, that is at rest, in this case, a person just standing there. And in this case, velocity equals zero, and the acceleration is zero. You have an unchanging velocity, and that velocity happens to be at zero. So we do call this equilibrium, even though this object is at rest. And you might frequently think about this first when we talk about equilibrium. But there's a second condition that's also very important. And this is the idea of moving equilibrium. That in this case, we have a non-zero velocity vector. This is a person on a skateboard. So we do have a velocity, but notice that the direction is not changing and the speed is not changing. So in this case, we still have acceleration is equal to zero. So in both of these cases, we would say acceleration is equal to zero because the change in our velocity vector is equal to zero. And where we then use Newton's first law with this is that because we have an unchanging velocity vector, an, a zero acceleration, we can say that our net force is equal to zero. And that's in both of these cases. Now, one thing that I want to stress that we'll talk a little more about later when we return to equilibrium in chapter six is that the statement is not that no forces act on our object. We, of course, know that if this person is standing on Earth, gravity acts on the person standing there. But there must be a second force, at least, that is canceling out gravity so that the vector sum of gravity plus the other force really, uh, really, sorry, uh, results in zero net force. Similarly here, we see that this person is rolling on the skateboard at constant speed, and so we could still say that gravity acts on this person. Now perhaps we would say that there should be some friction causing this person to slow down, but since we don't see the person slowing down, maybe there's also a wind pushing the person forward. That little force of friction, that little uh, force from the wind would cancel leading to zero acceleration, zero net force. So just make sure that you understand what equilibrium is and that anytime we have equilibrium, that simultaneously means that our net forces are equal to zero and that our change in velocity, our acceleration, is equal to zero. So to summarize all on one slide, when you have equilibrium, that means that your acceleration is equal to zero, which is by definition the same thing as saying that your change in velocity is equal to zero. And we know that our net force must be equal to zero. So for all of this to be true, we also have a constant speed and constant direction. So this is an and here. And it could be that constant speed and direction means actually zero at rest, but think of that as a special case. On the other hand, for a situation where we are not in equilibrium, we know that our acceleration is not equal to zero, which means that we have a change in velocity. That means that our net force is not equal to zero. Now, in this case, we would see a changing speed and or a changing direction. Keep in mind that you might only be changing direction and not actually be changing speed, and we would still have acceleration in that case. So I just keep trying to come back to this because when you have a real world situation, you might not explicitly be told about net force, but you might need to use the fact that the speed and direction are constant to then infer the, forces, the net force is equal to zero. So there's really two categories. You must determine which one you're in, and then everything will be true either from the left or from the right. Now that we've defined Newton's first law in equilibrium, I'd like to do a little bit of applications, and in particular, thinking about some misconceptions that students typically bring into the physics classroom. And I find, based on their homework and tests, that even after we've covered these mater this material, students still make some of these mistakes. So I'd like you to think briefly, what causes the arrow to move through the air at constant speed? So the situation is 
that some student having a very fun uh, weekend PE session is out at the archery range. They've pulled back this bow, uh, this arrow on their bow, let it go, and now the arrow is flying through the air at the target and it's moving at a constant speed. We would say the air resistance is negligible. So if the arrow is flying straight at a constant speed, what is the cause of that? So think about it. Now, what a lot of people might say, and this is where the misconception comes in, is that there's some force of motion or the force of the bow, and that's not correct. Technically, nothing is causing the arrow to move through the air at a constant speed. Now, this either is going to seem very trivial to you or you might want to argue with me about it for a little bit. But what we're saying is that in this situation, delta V is equal to zero. It's traveling in a straight line at a constant speed. Now, you can say, well, there's gravity acting on it, but if I'm just considering it traveling straight at a constant speed, we would say that delta V equals zero. So acceleration equals zero, and we then would say that our net force equals zero. This arrow is in equilibrium. Nothing is needed for it to travel in a straight line at a constant speed. Now, obviously, it has an initial velocity, but we don't actually say that the bow is what's causing it now to do anything. As it's flying through the air at a constant speed, constant velocity, it's just going to do that. A force would cause a change to the motion. So any time that you have motion changing, you know that there is a cause, which we call a force. But if the motion is not changing, well, there's no net force in that case. There's not anything causing it to continue in a straight line. So this is something really important that a lot of students get tripped up on. So let me try to clarify that a little more. So in particular, the thing that I want you to remember is that there's no such thing as a force of motion. The term that we might use is inertia, and inertia isn't a force. Inertia is just the property of an object to obey Newton's first law, i.e. something that every object has. So remember that any time you want to talk about a force, it must have an identifiable agent, meaning there is a thing that is causing the force. So if you say a force of motion, well, what is causing that force? You can't point to the motion and say this is causing the force. The motion is a property that the object has. So the agent should be another physical object, like the Earth causes the force of gravity. Now, usually the force comes from something that's actually in contact. The exceptions to that that we'll deal with this in this class largely will be gravity. The second issue, um, the second exception will be electromagnetic forces. We talk about those a lot less often in this class, but in that case, you don't have to have anything in contact. One charge near another charge exerts a force on that charge. Similarly, one magnet near another magnet exerts a force on that magnet. You don't have to have them in contact. So for anything else, pushing, pulling, uh, friction, tension, then you actually have to have something in contact. Finally, these actually have to happen at the same time. So whenever you have a change in motion, that's coming from the force occurring at exactly the same time and vice versa. If you apply a force, the change in motion immediately happens at the same instant. So you don't apply a force and five seconds later have the motion change. And so that's why in the case of the arrow, the bow impacted the motion only when the bow was in contact with the arrow. Once the arrow was no longer touching the bow, then the bow no longer mattered. You wouldn't say that the bow has any impact on its motion once it's in motion. So again, the thing to keep in mind is just because something is moving doesn't mean that there is a force acting on it. And the reason that that can be true is that your change in motion can be zero. Oops, sorry, change in motion can be zero. And in that case, you know that F net equals zero. I keep coming back to this. 
since this is the mistake that students make the most here. So if this hasn't bothered you at all, then either you've had good physics before and you've already gotten through this really difficult concept, or you haven't thought about this hard enough yet and you might end up making a mistake later. So please keep this in mind, that a force changes motion, an object can travel with constant velocity without any forces acting on it, or with zero net forces acting on it.